Hey there, it's time for Voice Over Body Shop. And George and I are thrilled to welcome a great friend of ours, Johnny Heller. Johnny, how you doing? Very well. Thanks for having me, guys. It's going to be a pleasure. We're going to talk about audiobooks, and we're going to talk about his career, and we're going to talk about... What's on that sign behind his head? Yeah, (laughs) That's what we're going to talk uh about. Yeah, we're going to... Because he's also a great audiobook coach. So if you've got a question for Johnny, throw it in the chat room, and we will get to that in just a little bit. we got plenty to talk to him about, and we are looking forward to this. Are you ready, Mr. Whittem? I'm ready. All right. Voice over body shop right now. It's time for Voice Over Body Shop. Brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source Elements, the makers of Source Connect. Voice Over Heroes, become a hero to your clients with award winning voiceover training. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voice actor website doesn't have to be a pain in the butt. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And World Voices, the industry association of freelance voice talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. BS. All right. Well, we're back and we're past Thanksgiving. Hmm. <laughs> he survived another one. We got rid of the, re- the we had the rest of the turkey last night. <laughs> it <laughs> lasted good. all weekend. And it was basically the primer for the dogs to eat their dinner. So oh. it's like, you don't like the food here. Here's some turkey. And that's, that's how it went. And how was I your think, Thanksgiving? I heard, you, I heard you had a very international Thanksgiving. It was, it was fun. It was fun. <laughs> we we had a I mean we had a very low key one. It was just a few uh, visiting friends, and uh, I spent the morning riding my bike bicycle up a mountain, which has become kind of a tradition. <laughs> so right. I rode up Mount Wilson with a few friends, and rode back down again. And it Ooh. was uh, hard, but it was beautiful, and the weather was great. It looked like you. I was watching the YouTube video or the the Facebook video, and I'm like, gee, usually you just like roll down, but this time you went up and then rolled back down. Yes. We earned, we earned our turns as we like to say. Yes, we did. But it was, it was a nice, pleasant, and the weather was fantastic here in Southern California. It really was. Yes. Shoveling all that sunshine. Certainly was. Buffalo friends. Anyway, uh, tonight we're going to talk about audio books because there seems to be an awful lot of you out there that are like, I want to do audio books. It seems to be the gateway voiceover, sort of voiceover adjacent career that people. It's the gateway drug for voiceover. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so we're going to introduce our guest because uh, this guy is one of the top coaches in the biz. He knows the audiobook business inside out, backwards, and upside down. Uh, Johnny Heller is an audiophile golden voice narrator and one of the most sought-after audiobook and commercial VO coaches in the nation. And he's a really swell guy. Johnny is on the ALA Odyssey. He's an ALA Odyssey Award winner, a Grammy nominee. He's narrated over a thousand titles in almost every genre. I got to ask him about that. Publishers Weekly named him a Listen Up Award winner in 2008 through 2016. Audiophile Magazine named him a Best Voice of 2008 through 2011 and 2014 to 2018. What happened in the in-between years? 2020 and one of the top 50 voices of the 20th century. this This is getting old here. Uh, a multiple recipient of book list and publishers weekly starred reviews. Johnny has garnered over 30 earphone awards is a 14 time audio award nominee and a four time, four time audio award winner. Let's welcome to voiceover body shop. Our good friend, Johnny Heller, Johnny, how you doing? I should, I should do what you didn't say. To, I said not to do pretty good. Thanks. <laughs> what not to do. <laughs> Yeah, the one word answer. The one word oh, answer. Oh, yeah. Good. Okay, I good. think you could shorten good, all that. I think you could shorten that whole <laughs> intro down and just put one word grizzled. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> grizzled veteran. Yeah. Like they used to say about wrestlers. Yeah. Wisdom. Anyway. Yeah. anyway, you know, it's been a long time since we had you on. I think the last time you were on, we were still doing EWABs. 
uh, back yeah, when I was yeah. in Buffalo and George was in Santa Monica. But can you tell us, you know, because you haven't been on in a while, we have a, a larger audience, a massive audience all over the world. Can you tell us a little bit about your background aside from all the stuff that I just rattled off and how yeah, you got into um, voiceover? I, I, I started uh, um, as a, I started my career as an equity actor on stage and uh, I was doing equity and I did uh, stand-up comedy. So I do um, I was on a show on uh, the Blackstone Theater in Chicago and I'd uh, come down at 10 and I'd drive out toward, uh, toward the airport area and do, uh, and I'd work for the, I was on the evening, uh, the evening menu for the comedy clubs at night. So I'd do my sets at about 11 and again at midnight or so. So I do stand up and then, and then I was studying acting, of course, and my guru was one of those voice of God guys. And, uh, his, some agents came to watch the thing and they like, they thought I had a quirky voice cause I have a uh, quirky voice. So they decided to uh, send me out as a voiceover guy. And I didn't even know that was, that existed. And the first job I got, the first job I auditioned for, I got was a national for Campbell's soup. And this is before internet and everything before the model T and they, they, um, <laughs> They, they, they had a, a traveling band from New York and went from, to New York to uh, L.A. to Chicago to find this voice. And the audition was literally this. I, I, I've done it many times to demonstrate my skill. It was this. Mm-mm. That was it. And so I got the gig. <laughs> <laughs> but you must have done it just perfect. I was like, who the hell couldn't do that? <laughs> these, guys just wanted, these guys wanted to go into just a drink junket from New York to L.A. to Chicago because they could have found... <laughs> Anybody at a diner anywhere who could say after after having their soup. Mm -mm. <laughs> well, you know, acting's tough because you know you, you get that words in front of them and they're going to freeze up and go, mm? Mm? yeah, mm. Or, uh, uh huh, or just completely. <laughs> how do you screw it up? I don't think I gave them what they wanted. <laughs> and since then, I've played I played dogs who are happy about getting a treat. Or yee, just <laughs> all the. It, and you realize how how crazy the the commercial voiceover business was. But I did a. I did a lot of that, a lot of on camera. And then I, um, I when I was still 10 in bar, because, you know, I, I did real work, you know, 10 in bar and all kinds of restaurant stuff, like 25 years. My, my overnight success took a long time. Um, so uh, I, uh, Richard Ferrone, the late, great Richard Ferrone, my dear friend, introduced me, brought me into recorded books because they needed a uh, youthful sounding guy with a quirky voice who was high energy. Um, <laughs> and there I was. So I got hired right away, started working at Recorded Books in, I think, 1991. And, uh, and that, and why I thought it was, I thought it was just another thing to do while I waited to become a famous uh, second banana in a movie or something. And, uh, and instead it became my, my, uh, my everything. And, and since then it's been, you know, I've done, I do other stuff. I still do stage and still do voice, but it's, it's where I really live, I guess. It's what I, I, I really love it. Yeah, what what really led you to doing that? What you know, I mean, you, obviously there was an opportunity there for you to do it. You just found you liked it, or was it something? That well, you I, I found it fit my schedule for everything. I could work schedules around it. Um, it was a little different the way I, I got in because I knew a guy. They needed, and they basically hired me right off the street. That just doesn't the opportunity like that doesn't exist anymore. But what I liked about it was the organic nature of it, the idea, the the storytelling aspect. The idea that it was very much like a nice mix between film, which is big jazz hands and loud, but organic with the script, and in cinema and film acting, which is small and get, it's it, it was a it was a mix of every everything I had learned and studied in my career coming together to just share the author's truth in a way that made it uh, that made it work. So I was quite it, it just it just it just worked for me. It's what I really found. I I really enjoyed it. Sadly, it doesn't pay as much as other um uh vo opportunities but it, it certainly takes care of me i mean it's it's been very rewarding on every level financially and otherwise yeah i mean it's it, it, a lot of people will will use audiobooks when they're like between gigs and they got to fill the space there and it's like oh i can do an audiobook and and then they try doing an audiobook and, and learn <laughs> what, what's involved in doing that sort of thing the uh, it, i have a good voice let's do it is just not is, is yeah. doesn't always work yeah. If you're just joining us, our guest is Johnny Heller and, uh, and his dogs. And uh, <laughs> my wife just came home. Yeah. And if uh, you have a question for him, throw it in the chat room 
And we will get to your questions in just a little bit, but we got a lot to ask him, too. So perhaps we'll ask your question before you have a chance. But Jeff Holman is back there in the chat room writing everything down and passing that on to us. So uh, you say you're doing audiobooks, and, and I take it that's the, your, the majority of the work that you're doing these days. Right in between uh, running my workshops, coaching, and audiobooks. But audiobooks takes up is the major part of my uh, day and my income. And it's, my, it's still my joy. I mean, it's to do something. It, I, I, it's not hard to get up and go to work. A, a, because I live in a Manhattan apartment with two rooms and <laughs> this booth is in one of them. So I get out of bed and there's the booth. But um, I love what I do. I really, 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 every day is a, um, a chance to tell another story. To do another, I, one of the things I never, ever wanted to do was have a job I had to do to put food on the table. Um, and I absolutely love what I'm doing. Uh, and I, I mean, do I wish there was a lot? I mean, I, 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 it's not bad money at all. I don't want to say that, but I, it's not commercial money. And there's rarely residuals unless you're doing an ACX or you know, royalty share project. So that's why a lot of agents don't want this. But there's, you know, there's still good loot. You, know, you do a book. Let's say you make $200 a finished hour. Well, a 10-hour book, that's $2,000. So I recommend that you don't do your own editing and mastering. And I promise you can't do your own proofing. But if you just do that, I mean, that's, there's not, that's not a bad way to make a living. 200 bucks an hour is nothing, to, you know. Yeah. If you, How if, much <laughs> do you like to do yourself? I, like you said, don't proof yourself, which I've been telling people for years, don't self-proof. Well, you, as I said, George, you're, you're the tech. I'm, the, I'm absolutely, I'm not only... I'm very lately opposed to tech. I don't, I don't understand it. I don't want to, I've, I had some people, I had Zane Birdwell is a great guy. And some other people come over at this house and uh, plug all the crap in. And I don't know where things go. And I don't want to, I just want to hit the button that says record. And then here's what I do. Here's my job. I, once I, you know, in terms of tech, I hit the record button and I say what I want to say. And if I make a mistake, I do punch record, fix it. And when I'm done with that track, I hit consolidate and save, um, and then I go to the next track. And then when I'm done with that, I put it in who was ever FTP and I don't do another thing to send me retakes. I, I think the industry average in working is like two to one, two hours in the booth for one finished hour. Now my rate is better than that. So yeah, because it should be at this time anyway, but I, you can't proof yourself because you wouldn't say something wrong if you didn't, if you didn't know better. So and, and people just right. didn't tell you that it's integral or integral. One's right. One's wrong. If you don't know, then get someone to proof the damn thing. And in terms of mastering and editing, I, I, I don't even know what that means. And if it's two to one just to record it, it's going to be five or six to one to do all that. Then there's a law of diminishing returns. Economics comes in and you might as well be working at McDonald's. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I say let the tech geniuses and God bless you all for being that do their job, pay them for it. You make more money paying someone else to do that stuff and you go ahead and keep acting. Yeah, it's, t it's time well spent, as George and I yeah. will attest to. <laughs> it's like, you know, get it right up front, you save a lot of, st a bad, a lot of work on the back end. Uh, once again, we're talking to Johnny Heller. If you've got a question for him, throw it in the chat room right now. So what is your typical work day like? I mean, I mean, you said you, you get up, you go into your booth. I assume you have coffee and oh, you want, you want, say you want hello to your wife. Exactly. And... You don't want to know everything I do. I'll see you. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I, I walk the dogs. I, uh, um, and I, get, I have to make sure that I feel ready to work. I mean, I've been, uh, uh, and, and, and I, there's always something to do. That's one of the things when you have your own business and everybody has to realize this is, this is your business this is who you are. There's always something to do. If you don't have a book, you have something to do, but there's always a book to prep work to do. So I've got a, I've got a little board outside this, uh, on the other side of slow the fuck down. That's a, the other side of the wall is a board. That's got all my, all my books and Joanna's books. And we make sure we're not going to, we have time together in the time separately in the studio to work together. One studio, two actors. Um, so my, I go in and I, um, I, I knock out, I don't, I, I schedule in my phone, my calendar, I schedule record. It'll say 11 to three. Well, in there, I know I'm going to have lunch. So let's say I'm in there, but I'm going to, I'm going to get, that's my work time. And if something comes up that interferes with that, I have to take the hour or the 15 minutes or 20 minutes I lost and reschedule it another time. I'm a, I'm a big believer in writing, the th writing your schedule down so you stick to it. Um, I'm, and I'm also a big a believer in leaving your booth. Um, 
five, 10, 15 minutes on every hour. Uh, I, some people stand, some people sit, I sit, but you got to get up and move around. And also you got to get out of there. It's, it's an unnatural thing uh, to do what we do and, and to stay focused. I mean, if you're in the booth and you're getting hungry and you're thinking about lunch, then you're not in touch with, with what's happening in the story. So if you're thinking about a tuna melt, then you, you should, you're, then you got to figure out where <laughs> that started and go get a damn tuna melt and then come back. So you've got to be aware of what's happening body wise. So my schedule, my day is every day I'm in the studio two to five hours, depending on what kind of um, deadlines I have. Sometimes I do more than one book, <laughs> not at the same time, but I'll do like a children's book in the morning and then take a lunch break and then go to the adult history in the afternoon or something. Um, it just depends what I've, what I've scheduled myself for. A big part of the actors, the audiobook actors day is uh, comes before the day starts in saying yes to projects and scheduling them in a way that makes sure you're going to be on time. Being late without excuse, sickness is an excuse. Being late without a fair excuse is, uh, is problematic. And it's yeah. going to make sure you don't get hired again. My, 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 my uh, version of success in the industry is being hired twice by the same company or the same author. You know, that's, no, that's, it's not, it's not the Yelp. I mean, the audible reviews, it's the, um, it, it's getting hired again. That means they believe, <laughs> that means they like. Absolutely. Exactly. Uh, so what, what are you working on these days? What's, uh, what kind of projects are you working on? Now it's, now you do all sorts of genres cause you do fiction, nonfiction. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm one of the, I'm kind of blessed to, um, to be able to do all, I, I, I do everything, which is wonderful. I don't have to, I'm not specialized. So I've been working on, uh, I've got a bunch of new books coming up. I've got um, uh, the Thomas Prescott series. It's a prequel to uh, Nick Parag's wonderful character, Thomas Prescott. It's called The Numbers. I just got the prep for that. I'm working on book nine or 10 of the Johnny Dixon Mysteries, which is a YA teenage, kind of a Goosebumps. Remember Goosebumps books? Oh, yeah. yeah. I've done yes. a couple. It's like Goosebumps, but Goosebumps for Catholics. So it's, 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 <laughs> to define it's, that, uh, it's, well, it's really Catholic and oh, it's, okay. uh, then it's wonderful characters and there. And so it's, the characters have returned. It's like book nine. I think there's 10 of them. So that's through Blackstone. And then I've got, um, some, oh, you know, the book, you know, uh, um, what's that book? John, uh, somebody went to Mars, John, something, John Carter, John Carter goes to Mars. Remember that movie? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Was, those kind of books, yeah. those are uh, fantasy adventures like Jules Verne and Edgar Rice Burroughs did them. Right. Oasis Audio has me doing a couple of those coming up. I've got a, um, a private eye thing coming up. Um, gosh, and what what is there's something else, but I forgot what it was. I've got a bunch of things on the uh, a bunch of things lined up. Yeah, it'll it'll show up. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, it'll show up when you when you get to your. your yeah, when when someone says, "Where's my do? book?" and I'll say, "Oh yeah, that. oh yeah, that one." Yeah. <laughs> Once again, we're talking with Johnny Heller about audio books now. You've, you, you've, you've been coaching a lot, you know, and a lot of people know you as a, as a, uh, an audio book coach primarily. Uh, how did you get into doing that? Uh, that started, <clears throat> let's see, I think in the early or mid two thousands or something, I can't quite remember. I was asked, some people want to say, can you talk to us? I think a, a group asked, can I talk to them about audiobooks?" And I'd been going on the road for recorded books to libraries and doing readings and talking about audiobooks and sort of an ambassador. And then some people said, it came up, um, my first big, word, I started coaching individually and then people said, hey, would you do something? We're coming to town for um, the APA convention and uh, they asked if I would do something. They had a free day, well, I think it was a Monday because APA was going to be on a Tuesday. This is 2015. And I did my first splendiferous workshop. At the Beacon Hotel here in New York it was really it was so much fun. We had I one of my workshop things is to make sure I have coaches. It's not the Johnny Heller show. It's it's Scott Brick and it's Sean Pratt and it's Joanna Perrin and it's Carol Monda and Hillary Huber. I bring in big coaches, big people, good people to share different things because I know what I think. I don't. I I need to learn too. So I want to hear what the other people have to say. So since that, I've done a splendiferous workshop, one or two or three a year every year. And Scott Brick and I. He's involved in all of those things with me. He and I do our business workshop. This year will be a little, we're not sure about the timing of any of that. Um, we have the, um, should I plug these things now? Is it now? Sure, the, our, the entire idea of our show is utterly shameless promotion. Okay, so I'm feel utterly free shamelessly to promote talk about okay. what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's, here's what's coming up. Okay. In, in March, uh, 
We're doing, we're all, I think we're, all of us will be at VO Atlanta. And then that we ends on a Sunday on the 25th. On the 26th, I think is APAC. On that night are parties and things. The next day, Tuesday, is a big SAG after a national meeting. So I don't want to compete with that. And that evening is the Audis, um, which is the award ceremony for the um, uh, Audio uh, Publishers Audio Association books. Awards. I do something called the Naughties, which I've had for years. And it's just a party to come to because there's nothing to go for people who were in town for the convention but didn't have a place to party. So I happen to uh, <laughs> know bartenders and bars. Don't know why. So um, uh, I put together this the Naughties with the, actually with uh, um, Jeff Kafer and Melissa Axelbreath. And we started this thing. And it's been going great. So you get there on 7. It's going to be at Connolly's on 45th, as it always has. Get there on that Tuesday night. You, if you're going to the Audis. Come after as the after party. If you're not going, come and enjoy yourself. I mean, it's uh, buy what you want, drink what you want, eat what you want. And then after, it's all, you can dress like I'm dressed right now. And then, uh, uh, and then afterward, people, the tuxedo and gown people come. So it's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of fun. And then that Wednesday, the next, the day after, I'm working on a venue to have a splendiferous workshop. I'm going to start it a little later at 10 o'clock for the, because you can be hung over and probably will be. So I'll start at 10 and end around four. And I might bring some publishers in for that. I haven't worked out the agenda because I'm still trying to uh, lock down the space. I'm not sure how many people will be in, in the city for that, but we're going to do that. And then uh, Sean Pratt and I with Joanna uh, Perrin frequently and uh, sometimes Anna Clement from Great Britain go on the road. And we're not, we haven't decided the cities we're going to this year. We usually do two or three cities, talk, take a fiction and nonfiction audiobook workshop on the road. And then in October, either October 16th or the week after, I'm not sure, we'll be back at the Warren Center in Framingham, uh, uh, Massachusetts, just outside Boston, for I think it's the, maybe the ninth um, New England Narrator Workshop, which is, you're there, uh, we get there Monday, we're there Tuesday, Wednesday, we leave Thursday. Last year we had uh, Penguin Random House publisher was with us, Macmillan was with us, Spectrum Audio was with us, and uh, um, Dreamscape. So we have... Um, it's 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 really wonderful time, and it's kind of like an up with people camp with less singing. Yeah, I was Although we say, what, what goes people. on at these workshops? I mean, you're just not sitting uh, there reading books. Out, well, Monday, mean- Monday's <laughs> dinner and the cocktailing. We do a listeners lounge every night, um, which is where I, I started that in the APAC some years ago, where I had some of the finest narrators in the in the land do their work, and and they still carry on, but it's changed now. Um, we have listeners on. People get to read their stuff. Then we do karaoke. In the meantime, there's a fire outside. Uh, there's a marijuana distributor right across the street. So there's, <laughs> there's, you know, there's, 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 there's partying happening. And then um, the next morning we begin with a panel. We have breakfast and a panel discussion. Then we break out into uh, four or five different workshops. You pick what you want. Then there's lunch. And then we have directed readings with our coaches. And the publishers wander from directed reading to directed reading listening to the various narrators do their stuff. And, and sometimes they, they give input, sometimes they don't. But uh, a lot of people get, get work or certainly get noticed. And there's always a chance to interact. And we spend this, because it's three or four days, with you become friends with these people, which is so important because people, gosh, actors put casting people and publishers and agents on these pedestals. And it's, it's an unfortunate way the business has grown. No one belongs on a pedestal. Um, and these people aren't, they don't want to be on a pedestal. You know, they're, they're regular. They want to talk. They want to, they want to meet. They, yeah. You have to understand casting people want to know you. They want to cast you. They want to find you. They want to give you work unless you suck, in which case they don't. But that only makes sense. So it, I, I just think that, uh, and that's, what's great about APAC too, frankly, it gives a lot of actors, especially newer people, a chance to meet people who can help them in their career, which can be their fellow actor as well. Absolutely. More often than not, I get a lot of work from fellow actors and I've given a lot of work to my fellow actors. Yeah. That's, that's always great about it. That's, I think it's one of the great things about the voice community is we, we, oh. we really do network and we really do look out for each other. And, yeah. It's a fellowship. It's a community. And, and granted there are people in it who are like, mm-hmm. but by and large, <laughs> by and large, it's, it's, I've never, I've ever, ever been a part of such a, uh, such a swell group of humans, plain and simple. Yeah. Uh, we're talking with uh, Johnny Heller again. If you've got a question, uh, get it in the chat room right now. We, we will get to him in just a, you know, those questions in just a little bit. Now, you were talking a little bit about relationships with uh, publishers and authors. There are so many people trying to break into the, the audiobook business. You know, you know, George and I are constantly talking 
to people, you know, set up our studio. I'm doing audiobooks. And we're like, okay. And, and it's doing audiobooks, you know, sonically can be a little bit different than doing voiceover because, of, as you were saying, there's a lot of post stuff that you have to know how to do. Uh, but if someone's trying to break in, what are some basic steps that somebody should do in order to say, I want to do audiobooks and, and try and dive into the pool? Well, for one thing, you need to research the industry a little bit. Um, the notion that, you know, everybody said you had a good voice, you should do audiobooks is, it's, it's just, it's unfair to everybody who does this. Research the, know a little, listen to a damned audiobook. Um, uh, Sean Pratt has a little video on YouTube and basically he just tells you to go in a closet and read for a couple hours. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's something to be said for that. Um, you have to be able to sustain your connection with the material and with the story for for a prolonged period. Now, it doesn't mean you're not allowed to make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes, but a, a voice a commercial voiceover is 15 seconds, 30 seconds, 45 seconds, 60 seconds. That, that's how long you're, you're doing the spot, and you have to be connected for that much time. We'll extend that to you know a 10-hour book or a 15-hour book or however long it is. You have to be completely in the author's head. You ha he, his words or her words have to go through you as, as a conduit to their truth. It just has to happen. Um, I believe that what you need to do is one, recognize it as acting. As a matter of fact, recognize every single voiceover genre you've ever heard of as acting, because it is. And if you're not willing to accept that, then maybe you need to reconsider the whole idea. Also start thinking about the fact that no matter whether it's e-learning, telephony, whatever it is, it's not necessarily easy money. There's talent, there's skill, there's training. Get some training. If you've never had it, get some. Um, here's the deal. There's just a boatload of books out there. Tons and tons. And there's plenty of work for you. Um, uh, I would say what, what's the, the APA came out with some numbers not long ago about the percentage of books that actually get produced in audio. And uh, the audio, when I started, was a multi-million dollar business. Now it's a multi-billion dollar business. But there's a lot of books that never, ever get picked up. So if you get to meet an author, let's say George wrote a book, you know, my, my life riding bikes in, 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 in L.A. canyons. Never going to well, happen. <laughs> with, they may not be interesting to anyone but George, but I bet there are people who like it. And he wants me to do it. So he and I, I here's a guy who says, how do I get it to? I've had authors come to me a lot. How do I get my book in audio? Because every artist, every filmmaker, every, every everybody who makes art wants their art to be seen. And not every bit of art is great. Not every story is great. But the listener can never, ever suspect that you, the narrator, don't like the story. It's so, just like getting a role in a film and you read the script and you're like, how did this get, or you see a movie and you go, how did this, how did this get, get made? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Think, because <laughs> to somebody, it's the best movie they've ever made. Yes, yeah. Right? And it's for, the best for an author, ever, yeah. it's the best book they've ever written. And it, it's, there, Of all the trauma team releases, one of them is her favorite. Trauma, yes. <laughs> <laughs> trauma films. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, it's, just, it's just important. To, a lot of people don't take this seriously. You can't say, I'm having a hard time acting. I think I'll take an audio book on. Excuse me. And that's just not how it works. Pardon me. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's, 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 it's a craft. Acting is a craft. And I, I recommend everybody who does it. I think everybody, I think everybody, no matter who you are, you should ever take an improv or a scene study class. Everybody, everybody. The same way I think if you want to go to a restaurant, you should work for a week in a restaurant. One's too young to start with taking classes of that n nature. In, the, right? in, in terms of acting, I don't know when it's too young. In terms of audiobook, hard to say. Um, I, it's not my nature to teach kids because I have signs mm -hmm. up like that. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I work a little blue sometimes, so I, I don't, uh -huh. I'm not comfortable. Yeah. I'm not comfortable. So I, you know, I would say, if you're gifted and not just because your mom told you, if you're gifted high school, because you know, there are a lot of roles. Like when I started, I did a lot of little kid roles. Well, mm -hmm. a little kid might be better at that. Certainly now that I'm an old man, they, they better have a little kid. Um, but you, you think about certainly in college. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, there's no like 18, you can vote, you can drink, you can do audio. Right. I don't know what the, right. I don't know what it should be. But I think you, know, you need to be, it's, but it's a serious craft that yeah. takes dedication and a real lot of work. So you have to love literature for one thing. You really do. You got to love it because 
gosh, there's a lot of books that aren't. You think, how, what, what, why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> Who gave this asshole a typewriter? So you got to, <laughs> but that, that's not, that can't come out in your reads. Absolutely. I'll be happy to be... dump on authors later, but not, yeah. not now. <laughs> yeah. Once again, we're talking with Johnny Heller and uh, we're going to take a little break right now. And uh, we'll be back. If you've got a question, again, throw it in the chat room. we got lots of them to get to, so we'll see you in just a minute. Johnny Heller here on Voice Over Body Shop. We'll be right back. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on the Voice Over Body Shop. It's the holiday season, and if you're a voice talent, not everyone in your family or close friends really understands what you want for your home voiceover studio. You want a what? Well, VoiceOverEssentials.com has the perfect solution. The VoiceOver Essentials gift card. It's the perfect answer when you get that you want a what question. You pick the amount you want to give, and they take care of the rest. The recipient will receive their digital gift card and a gift code to use for anything they offer at voiceoveressentials.com. Like the Harlan Hogan VO1A microphone, the Portabooth Pro or Plus, Harlan Hogan Signature Series voiceover optimized headphones. A lot of what? Go to voiceoveressentials.com and click on Shop and Gift Cards and choose the amount. Give them or give yourself the gift of getting exactly what you want. Gift Cards now at voiceoveressentials.com. Well, it definitely is a uh, time to save money, right? Everybody knows that. Well, here is a company that I never thought would ever have a Black Friday sale, and that is our longtime sponsors, Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect. That's right. They are offering some of their software packages or softwares um, at some pretty steep discounts. So a lot of you are probably already aware of the fact that they have subscriptions, this is not going to be for subscriptions. This is for people that are like, you know, I've been paying for the subscription for four or five years. I just want to have the license now. I don't want to keep paying a subscription. And a lot of folks feel that way. This is probably for you. Um, they are offering Source Connect certificates and courses with some discounts. So if you want to actually go through some formalized training from the team at Source Elements and you really want to understand how that software works, works in your studio and have a better understanding of, you know, just feel more prepared when a Source Connect session happens. They're offering those with some discounts, 40% off in some cases. They have Source Connect upgrades uh, at, a, at a fair deal. Um, there's a lot of offers here and it's really, it literally is, and as it says here, first ever Black Friday sale in 17 years <laughs> that they've done it. But anyway, if you want to get tuned in, just go to source-elements.com and these deals literally do end today on Black Friday. Um, so you, you, you got to jump on it. Anyway, thanks for listening. Let's get back to the show right after this. Hey there, I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th, and with my company, VO Heroes, and my team of coaches and my community of voiceover talent, we guide voiceover actors along their journey. And you may be watching VOBS here uh, and not nearly as far along as many of the other people who are watching. You may not even have started yet. And we actually specialize in helping you do just that. So if you're watching all the stuff going on here on VOBS and going, I have no idea what they're talking about. I don't know, but I really want to do this. I'd really like to help you. Please go to VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. And you can take our Getting Started in VoiceOver class, which tells you everything you need to get started as a voice talent. And I'd love to hold your hand along the way and help you with that journey. Again, VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying VoiceOver Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. And we're back with Johnny Heller. We got a pile of questions. You you have a lot I of sure fans, do. clearly. Yeah. <laughs> I have a lot um, of what? <laughs> you have a lot of fans. <laughs> yeah, go on with you. <laughs> All right. Uh first question from Laura Patankin. George, you got the question. Yeah, it's Johnny says uh, she says, Johnny, what are the best ways to acquire work 
from the big five publishers. Well, um, it's like the how do you get an agent question? Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> for, well, you should you should marry one of the people who work there. Um, I, I there's a number of ways. First off, they are always looking for new talent. Uh, I know for a fact that Penguin Random House um, has AhabTalent.com, where you put up your profile like you do in ACX, and they have auditions that are supposed to be sorted to meet um, your profile. It, I'm not sure it's it's not as tight as it ought to be because I know I get a lot of uh, opportunities to audition as a, 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 a young uh, a Kenyan girl um, and, and weird stuff like that. But they have there's that. Um, I know that they on Clubhouse you'll find um, uh, the Penguin Random House and I think Harper Collins sometimes does um, live things you can get involved. If you're in social media and you kind of need to be, even though the, I know it's problematic. Um, a lot of the publishers, casting people are there. Also, go to their website. They'll tell you on the website how to reach them. Do what they say. When you reach out to big publishers or any publisher, anybody who can cast you, you want to answer. You want to be the answer to their problems. You don't want to create new problems. So talk to them and reach out to them the way you'd like to be reached out to if you were them. They're all nice people. But the biggest thing, make a list and also take a look at what's in their catalog. So you see the kind of work they're doing and say, hey, you know, I saw you guys did this book. I love that book. If you have anything like it on my, on my website, on my demo, I've got something that I think you might enjoy and link them right to that place. That's okay. Just, you know, so make something, make, make, make a difference. Make yourself known. Don't be a pain in the ass. And you know when you are, you know it. Um, and, and you want to... Uh, on your website, this is super important. You, you got to have your demos up there. The, the link, if you're going to go to uh, uh, Dan Leonard Publishing and you say, Mr. Leonard, I want you to hear my, I want you to go to my site and see it. Tell me what you think of my demos. And he goes to the site and there, he's got to go through all your, you know, your high school uh, um, um, the baton twirling championship ring and stuff. He doesn't want to see that. You get him right to where the demos are. It should be one damn link to bam. And there you are. If he wants to go back and read about, your accolades and, and, and your Boy Scout merit badges swell, but get them right to all the demos. That's important. So, and the publishers are also available a reason to join um, the APA, especially it's better. It's really a good organization. If you're starting out, I'm going to be honest about that. They do have speed dating, which is a, um, you don't necessarily get picked. I think it's a raffle, but you get a chance to be heard by a whole bunch of these people in going to some of these meetings. Now that, now that we've, uh, pretended we've defeated COVID. We're all meeting up again. So um, we can go to, we can go to uh, APAC and all these, other, and uh, everybody's there. Everybody's there. And if you want to meet them, go meet them. And, and don't, don't be so big on giving out your card. Be big on getting theirs. That's great good advice. Point. Absolutely great advice. You know, and if you need a good demo player, we have a free demo player at worldvoices.org, which all members get, and it works just, Click on the link and there's all your demos. That's so important. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Kate Wisniewski, those well of said. us from Buffalo would say it. Um, she says, I've narrated a few books and I'm on the rosters of Blackstone, B Audio, Diane, and get auditions from them occasionally. I'm also consistently auditioning via ACX. What are other places I should be submitting auditions? Well, I, I'm not sure where all the auditions per se are listed. I know the Dreamscape has a portal, but it's by invitation. McMillan has a portal by invitation. So you need to reach out to some of the casting people to see. Yeah, one of the ways to find places, I know, I'll, I'll tell you exactly what you should do. Spectrum Audiobooks, a smaller house that I work for a lot. Uh, it's Annalise Rennie. Her name's Kelly Rin. And that her, and that's Kelly. She's a, they're always looking for good people. Uh, my friend Sarah Puckett has Pink Flamingo. They, they put their they put their um, auditions on Facebook on their groups. They're there. There's if you're looking for people to hire, they're there. And all these people, by the way, almost every publisher, big or small, um, does the SAG after uh, contract minimum. And and so you're going to make enough. You're going to make a reasonable amount of money. Understand that when you take a gig, particularly an ACX, it's just a warning sign. Take what you want, but you can negotiate your salary. Even if it's a royalty share, you can say, look, it's a royalty share. Uh, I know that uh, George is getting 
twenty percent. I'm getting twenty percent, and Jeff Bezos is getting sixty percent because you know the work he did to help us. Um, but you can say, George, it's your book. It's your book about you riding your bicycle in the canyons. Would you pay uh, my friend Dan Leonard, the engineer, to uh, master the thing? It's going to cost five hundred bucks, but I can't. I can't do that. And he says, sure. So George sends Dan the five hundred dollars. You just act. You get paid. You get your royalty share, whatever you agree to. While Dan's busy mastering, you go on to another project. It's another mm -hmm. reason I, you've got to get people who know. You, you don't have to wear 17 hats. Not every actor is a singer and a dancer. It, so you don't have to be a great actor and a great audiobook master. -er 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 -er. I don't even know <laughs> what those guys do. I, have, I know that I don't know how to do it, but I know you can't, you, the book can't go out, can't go out to the public until somebody does it. Mm -hmm. So whatever that step is, hire the people not to do it, for God's sakes. Actually, no, that, I, that, I went off on a tangent. Leads into another question. Do you, when you submit the 15-minute samples, are you having somebody prep that before you send it in? Or do I'm sorry, 15 minutes. Oh, for ACX. Yeah. Are, are you? Because I'm telling I, people I, no, that no. they should be mastered the same way as any other. Well, chapter, I, I, right? to be honest, I'm be fair. I don't do a lot of ACX stuff anymore. Yeah. yeah. Um. What I did do and what I would do right now, if I did an ACX, I would do the audition and I would hit that consolidate and get rid of the stuff. And, and I would, and I would just, and I'd send, what you do is I would take that. Yeah. I'd do my punch record and make it as nice as I can, but I wouldn't put it through any processing. I would just send an MP3 of that mm -hmm. to the auditor. I don't know if I'd spend the time or money to have my audition mastered mm -hmm. because a lot of times Certainly publishers, and I don't know about ACX rights holders, want to hear what the raw audio sounds like too. What will your booth sounds like with the sound? So if you master, if you put it through all your stuff, <laughs> again, I don't know what I'm talking about. If you put it through all your stuff, I, I think it may change what it is. And I, I, so I don't know if I'd go through that process and I don't, I don't like spending money on auditioning mm -hmm. personally. I don't mind yeah. spending time, but I don't want to spend money. But so, but if you have someone who's willing to master it yeah. for nothing, why not? But I think they prefer it not, which is yeah. unlike the finished product. Right? They want to hear the finished you, product. They want to hear if you thing. can relate the story and, and yeah, they want to know if you can do the job. They right. want to hear the the voice. They want to hear what you do, how you tell the story. Exactly right, Dan. Yeah, George, um, Jeff Holman, our very own. Um, he says, if you're narrating a nonfiction audiobook, do you have to read the whole book beforehand like when you would with a fiction book? That's a great question. And it, it's, I think, when you become skilled at doing all these kind of things, um, it, it kind of depends on the nature of the book. If it's an I'm okay, you're not psychological thing or a how to be a better marketer in 10 weeks or something, in general, those books are set up. The introduction tells you what's going to happen. And you have an idea. The, 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 the official answer is, yeah, you got to read it. Unofficially, if you have a schedule, you can kind of, if it's a nonfiction, generally in those kinds of books, you know, I understand you're hurting. Let me help you through the hurt, that kind of stuff. It's a repetition of this thing until it finally sinks into the listener's mind. And so you can probably escape reading all of it. You need to, you need to go through it or something. I'm also going to recommend if you don't feel like reading the book, then hire a prepper. There are such things and they're, they're totally wonderful. I know mm. a bunch of them and I use them. In fiction, you have to read the whole thing, I believe. Um, I, I, I've hired a prepper to help me with a book that I've got a, a bit of a hurry on, but I'm still reading it. I want her input. So I get, so just I'm in the same place, but I need to read it. So I know what happens because in a story, you need to know what goes on. And if, if, if the nonfiction book is military history or, or autobiography, yeah, you got to read it because that reads very much like nonfiction. Yep. Mm. Absolutely. Uh, Catherine Jade Jarvie asks, how do you find the balance in acting for audiobooks? She says, I feel like sometimes I lean into acting without doing voices or anything than may be desired. Do you have any input for this? And is she... <laughs> overthinking it I, i'm not certain i understand the question to be fair and i don't want to mislead her <clears throat> she's saying that she's concerned that she's overacting i guess overacting I so. yeah 
Yeah. Let me see. Let, thanks for the chance to ask the question. How do you find the balance in acting for audiobook? I feel sometimes I lean more into acting, in quotes, without doing voices or anything than may be desired. Well, I, I think if you feel yourself, here's, here's one of the big things. You know that John Lovitz when he goes, acting, and he does that acting. kind of thing? Yes. We, yes. Every time, every single time, and I, I'm guilty of it, I bet you guys are too. Every single time an actor comes in to talk to me, they talk just like this. Hey, George. Hey, Dan. Hey, Johnny. And we talk. We have a little chat. Okay, let's go ahead, go ahead and audition now. You come into the room and all of a sudden there's this new fucking guy. <laughs> Where did that come from? And, and it's that. And I think that we have to work against that. And I think that kind of bullshit acting takes you out of the moment. I think you need to settle on the idea that almost all of the audiobook acting we do, and almost all acting in general, yeah, here's what you need to think about. The different in audiobook acting, and this, will, this will probably be the answer. In audiobook acting, there's a tendency to think of it as theatrical because it's a script and it's a story, and that's, and that's what theater is. And sometimes there's a director, and that's what theater is. And you, for once in your life, get to play all the parts. You're King Lear and you're, and you're Lady Macbeth, you're everybody. The thing is, unlike theater, there, there's no jazz hands, there's no singing out Louise. There's no row double J. You have this wonderful microphone who is your audience. And that's who you're playing to. So it becomes, the idea is small. The idea is less is more. So to, it's, it, it is acting, but it's film acting. Mm -hmm. I believe audiobooks are cinema, cinematographers kind of acting. It's a cinema experience. I think the author, if it's fiction or nonfiction, uses words like a painter uses color to create a scene. The author creates a scene with his words and the job of the actor is to see the scene. And, be, and I, think, I think reading is like a film. That's why when you're reading, if it's, if it's I'm okay, you're okay, or you're Hogwarts, whatever it is, you're lost in that world. It's a George's dinner time, George's dinner time. Oh, okay, sorry, I was lost in Hogwarts because you're in that other world. I think you need, the actor needs to create that other world. And I don't think it's with big movements and big acting things, it's much smaller. There's reactions. <coughs> Pardon me, audiobooks need to understand there's a, um, there's a time to react. Someone says something. I never want to see you again. What? And that, that beat, that little pause between that and that, which is human nature, they'll, they want to get rid of it because it's dead space on the, on the tape, on the, on, the, on the wave file. That's acting. It's okay. Yeah. So I think that you're overacting if you're if you're so, if you seem big if you seem like you're if you seem like you're in the Broadway show of Gypsy you're doing too much. It's voice under, not voice over. I say, oh, George, perfect. That's, I love. That. I'm stealing Wait, what, that. But I'm, voice but I'm over stealing, acting. Aren't I stealing that from Shatner or something? I swear yeah. I heard him say that. Maybe sabotage. Maybe you are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one's from Patricia Andrea. Uh, she said, I tried LibriVox to do a tiny chapter of a book, but it had quite a few characters and mostly men. How do you decide not to make weird voices? If there are no requirements to do voices, how do you remind yourself if you do a voice or how do you refrain from doing a voice? That whole last part's in, in a parenthesis, but there's yeah. no closed parenthesis, so yeah, I don't yeah, know what to do now. <laughs> I'm lost. <laughs> Carry on, George. <laughs> Um, I think the answer is, is in the question. Um, you're not doing a voice, you're playing a character. I believe, um, and this is what I teach all the time, characters have to be, you have to cast the character from your frame of reference. We've all been to grade school and high school and then maybe further schooling and we've all worked in a place or that place. We've met people, we have families, we've seen film and television. All those people we've seen can be characters in our book. So let's say that so-and-so says, you know, it'd be great at that. It's Dan Leonard. I can see, now I'm not going to do a Dan Leonard impersonation, but if I picture Dan Leonard as my guy, I'm going to give it a different read than if I pictured um, Benedict Cumberbatch. You know what I mean? So I think you need to cast your characters from your frame of reference. I don't think, and wait, I just think you need wait. to understand that, sorry? Are you saying there's a difference? Between yes, between Benedict, Dan yes, Leonard yes. And oh, oh, Benedict only in the Sherlock Holmes portrayal. Okay, Other than okay, that, yes, it's exactly the same guy. Yeah, yes, cer <laughs> certainly in the, the Enigma Code, he was definitely uh, Dan. I, I saw Dan Leonard a lot of times. I got confused because of that. Yeah, I'm um, on the Watson type. Yes, <laughs> but I, I think I think you need to be um, understand that a character is is 
is based on who he is, not just a weird voice. You build it from the inside out, not the outside in. And I, I, ju I just think also you can understand that different character, you can change your voice. You can be quieter or louder or slower or faster or pace it faster. Or, you know, just a thousand different things to change your voice. When someone calls you on the phone, of course, now we have, it says George, a text caller, but George sounds different than Dan or sounds different than Johnny or sounds different than, uh, than, than, than Sue, than, than anybody, you know? So you can just, what makes somebody different? Just, you can, some people take a long time to speak. Just play the character. The voice will be there. And we already suspended our belief. You don't have to worry about, I know you're female playing a male. I know you're not a male. I'm already willing. I'm willing to believe you're everybody. It's okay. Carry on. Tell the story. Yeah. And that's the great thing about audiobooks, especially when you hear a great narrator like you or Scott Brick or uh, some of the others where you just get totally drawn in and the whole thing is in your mind and you can follow along. And that's really great. Uh, Terry Briscoe asks, have you ever tried or ever had a book that took longer than expected because it hit close to home or, and it was emotionally draining? <laughs> oh Lord. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, yes. Um, I, I, there, there are, there are many, um, especially if you're, if you're in the moment, I, I did Marley and me. Um, then it took, well, you know what happened? So, it took, it took probably 12 to 14. It took at least two or three hours for me to do the close of the chapter where Marley passes away. Just, I, because I, <laughs> when you're crying, yeah. no one can understand yeah. you. It's so, and so it's important to play the emotion, but you still need to be heard. Um, and, and also almost a, a lot of, in, when I started in the business, there was a lot, I did a lot of coming of age books. And in most of those books, the author's, had it in their mind that a child, a, a young adult could not become, a teen could not become an adult unless their mom, their dad, their best friend, their brother, or their dog died. <laughs> so there's always, so it's always, it's always, it's always heartbreaking. And in any, in any book, in any story, when a character you, you like, that you really enjoy passes away, however it is, you know, the, the death of someone that you care about, it is an emotional moment for you. So yeah, uh, and in many, 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 many books, it's been difficult for me, but that's also the joy of acting to get through those things and move on because it's a, uh, you know, act, acting is, is real life magnified. Absolutely. Right. George. You get one more in? Yeah, we, we got, got time, time for one or one or two yeah. more, sure. This one's from Maple J. Julie from YouTube. How long does it take to do the audiobook? take to do the audio for a book i have a problem of reading a book cover to cover mm, i think that's that, the two to one ratio you were talking about yeah though, yeah right? usually for every so if the audio book is a 10 hour book assume that the actor spent 20 hours doing it um, so it's two to one is the industry average again there are people who work a little slower work a little faster as long as you get your book in by the deadline I'm always early. I, I insist on being early, but always get it in by the day. I, I'll give a little, a little note. First off, uh, I forget, Miss Maple, I forget, Maple mm -hmm. Joe. Uh, Maple Joe. Um, you need to start reading a book cover to cover because otherwise you don't know how it ends, which is, <laughs> what's the point? Um, the other thing is, if you have a book and the publisher says, let's get it in, I need it on Friday. I'm going to tell you, they're not in the office on Friday. I, I, they're not. So say to them in the negotiation and you're allowed to say, look, that Friday's perfect, but you know what? Would it be okay if, say you're not in on Friday because Friday's all day. If it's, if it, when you get into the office on Monday, it's, it's in your files. Now you've bought yourself Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to finish the book in case you need it. And you're still in deadline. So you want to shoot for a Friday deadline and then extend it to the Monday morning. It gives you three days and doesn't do a thing to their schedule. I promise you, if it got there Friday, it's not going through their through their through their uh, uh, um, mastering stuff and proofing stuff <laughs> that weekend. It isn't in most cases anyway. So you can certainly, and that's just a little. It just gives you an extra three days on your schedule. All right, Johnny, little, little pro you, tip. Yeah, well. And thank you for we've had a lot of those tonight. Thanks. Yeah, we've this is this has been just golden this hour. We really appreciate you being with us, Johnny. 
again, if people want to get a hold of you for coaching and maybe attend one of your workshops, where do they go? That's it. There you go. Right. Well, yeah. that's easy. <laughs> <laughs> Johnnyheller.com for the podcast yeah. listeners out there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing that you can remember everything in order from all your workshops, but you don't know what book you're doing next. So. I, I know what book I'm doing now, but there, I, I know I'm leaving one out. There's like, there's four or five on my board and I can't remember which one I'm leaving out. I'm very, I'm, I'm super on American history, but shitty on my history. <laughs> Love doing the, the, uh, the narrative for American history. Anyway, Johnny, thanks so much for being with us. Always a pleasure. Looking forward to seeing you next time when we cross paths. All right, guys. Thanks so much. See you, buddy. You. Nice to see you, fellas. All righty. All right. I have no idea how to get out of here. <laughs> well, well, we'll figure it out. George and I will be right back after this uh, to wrap things up. You're still watching VLBS? <laughs> In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. Voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. There's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. VoiceOver Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions, bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. And we're back. Next week on this very show, we will have Tech Talk number 91. Believe it or don't. Uh, there seems to always be more tech. I know. Well, I we, don't get we've it, got but... lots to talk about tonight, too. So, uh, yeah. you know, now if you want to watch Tech Talk live, you can hang out for a little bit and you can ask your questions and then you can be part of the show and then we'll play it next week. But we're also going to do it live right after we finish with this hour. So. Now's the time. All makes perfect sense. It, 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 once you get into it, I mean, most of you know the show. We know how we do this. Yeah. Anyway, you got some webinars coming up? Yeah, I've got, well, in, in, on the uh, paid, paid stuff, I do have a webinar that's the Adobe Audition Advanced course where I get to go deeper into multi-track and get into some more tricks. Um, that's on November 30th. You can sign up at georgethe.tech slash webinars. You can get 10% off of that by typing in VOBS fan 10 in the coupon code area. And lastly, in the free side of things on Tuesday, tomorrow, um, I'm doing an ask me anything on clubhouse, which I do the last, uh, Tuesday of the month, every month. Um, again, that's on clubhouse. Just look for George, the tech on clubhouse. All righty. And we've got, uh, lots of donors, people you can look, if you want to help support the show. We really appreciate it. Um, it. It makes us, it makes the technical end of this so much easier when we have the stuff that we need to do it. And we appreciate everybody who uh, donates to us like Robert Leadham, Stephen Chandler, Casey Clack, Jonathan Grant, 
Tom Pinto, Greg Thomas, A Doctor Voice, Antland Productions, Martha Khan, 949 Designs, Christopher Epperson, Sarah Borges, Philip Sapir, Brian Page, Patty Gibbons, Rob Ryder, Shauna Pentington Baird, Don Griffith, Trey Mosley, Diana Birdsall, and Sandra Manwiller. Hey, you can join our mailing list, too, so you know who's coming up on the show. And uh, you can do that at our website, vobs.tv, and click on subscribe, and uh, we'll get you Mm -hmm. on the list there. We need to thank our sponsors, of course. Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And Voice a world dash voices dot org the industry association of freelance voice talent our thanks to jeff holman for getting all those questions to us in the chat room uh and uh, sue merlino for great direction and of course johnny heller mm-hmm. for what a great hour of uh tips that he gave us awesome. and of course lee penny just for being lee penny all right well we're gonna re-rack it and get ready for tech talk so don't go away uh and uh remember this is not an easy business But when it comes to your audio, if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. Have a good week, everybody. Later.